Boy, am I excited for this video because, as the vast majority of you may know, the genre of horror doesn't exclusively begin and end on the silver screen, but is an all encompassing creature that spreads its eldritch tendrils to many different forms literature, animation, campfire tales, highbrow art, and of course, graphic fiction. Since the early days of geekdom, horror has wrapped itself up in the archetypal comic book, and since then, we've been inspired by some of the most finely crafted and horrifying horror series. So, in that case, I guess you better take a look. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top five scariest horror comic book series. I've never fully understood that tradition. If for the ferryman. The ferryman who takes the body across the river into the land of the dead. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2001's From Hell, starring Johnny Depp, and although his faux cockney accent was pretty close to abysmal, it was still an equally impressive interpretation of one of the greatest horror graphic novels of all time, which may or may not be on this list. I guess you better stick around to find out. Hmm. Now, there are many, many worthy contenders for this list, but to begin with, we'll denote some of the most essential horror comic books for you to add to your collection. And who knows? Then we'll do a part two. Maybe? Yeah, we probably will. Don't worry. Kicking off at number five, Hellblazer. We can't speak horror comic books without first referencing one of its most captivating and bad characters, the con man slash demonic mage, John Constantine. In actual fact though, before his own series, Constantine peeked his head through the panels of the legendary horror comic Swamp Thing, which may or may not be on this list, first appearing in the June 1985 issue of the saga of Swamp Thing. Listen guys, you've all got pretty awesome horror takes, and I'm fairly certain that for those of you that haven't yet read Hellblazer, you'll gobble it up like a bloated demonic hellhound at an all-you-can-eat buffet. And if that simile went over your head, in other words, you'll really, really enjoy it. Hellblazer is equal part Parts, occult detective noir, gritty fantasy, pure horror, and in several instances, incredibly hilarious deadpan humor. Also, its name is attached to some of the most legendary writers in horror history Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Peter Milligan, the fantastic Garth Ennis, and that's only to name a few. Originally published by DC Comics, but later picked up by Vertigo for its most captivating 15 year run, Hellblazer and John Constantine will literally take you to hell and back, and also literally give Satan himself the middle finger. If that's not reason enough to enjoy Hellblazer, I'm not sure what is. Swinging in at number four, Hellboy. I mean, John Constantine aside, there isn't really a more iconic horror demon leading man than Big Red himself, Hellboy. And also, as a side note, Ron Perlman is the only cinematic Hellboy ever. Although, I think we should all give fair chance to David Harbour because that guy is dope. Created by the legendary Mike Mignola, Hellboy is perhaps one of the most notoriously awesome horror creations in fiction. And much like Hellblazer carved the path through alternative storytelling by literally littering the way with more evil Nazi occultists, 11th hour rituals, and murderous clockwork killers than you can shake a pitchfork at. You know what was so awesome about Hellboy though? He's the literal definition of an anti-hero. He's the son of the demonic Duke Azael, and despite that, he's also the personification of being a damn good dude. Also, his real name is Anung Unrama, which means, and upon his brow is set a crown of flame. How cool is that? The Hellboy series ran from 1993 all the way up to 2016 in one of the most captivatingly original displays of Lovecraftian horror, badass one-liners, and tear-jerking moments of family and brotherhood. Next up at number three, Sandman. All right, you might be thinking, Come on, Jack. Sandman isn't really scary. And while in some ways I tend to agree, but the matter of fact is that Sandman is one of the most uniquely original horror titles in graphic literature. And more than anything, I appreciate originality. Also, it's Neil Gaiman. Come on. Time and time again, Sandman continues to be a genre in and of itself, blending fantasy, magical realism, and psychological horror into a neat, terrifying, and cerebral package. The Sandman series, again published by Vertigo via DC Comics, focuses on the main character of Dream, also known as Morpheus, and many other mythological names. It tiptoes its way across such a broad church that it's oftentimes so easy to get lost in its narrative, and I mean that in a good way, blending eternal concepts of religion, mythology, and folklore through a stream of terrifying consciousness. When the series first began in 1989, Neil Gaiman was just another British upstart trying to make his way in fiction, but when it ended in 19 96, everyone just kind of held up their hands in awe and said, okay, all right, who the hell is this dude? Listen, Sandman isn't exactly full frontal horror, but when it pulls the scares, it pulls them like no other. Coming in at number two, 
Swamp Thing. We can't really make a horror comic book list without putting Swamp Thing on it. There are laws to these things, you know, and I don't want to break them. With the more modern incarnation of old Swampy, who is all round probably the most decent dude in comic book history, it may be easy to forget that the origins of Swamp Thing literally form the basis for contemporary horror. And we have one man to thank for that, the legendary Englishman and perhaps the greatest graphic novel writer in history, Alan Moore. Before that though, Swamp Thing already had incredible horror pedigree with its creators Len Wine and Bernie Wrightson, who creeped onto the canvas in a horrifying display of creature feature body horror, sticking on the fringes of comic book fandom whilst developing a hardy cult following. The thing is though, when Alan Moore took control of Our Boy Swampy back in the 80s, vegetable matter was never the same again, and horror fiction was battered by some of the most horrific scenes ever inked. With each page, Alan Moore took us deeper and deeper into the horrors of the swamp, in grotesque displays of death and resurrection, and the fierce eternal struggle of creation. He gave us the Parliament of Trees and the Green, the Pharaonic Man, and of course, John Constantine himself, all the while penning some of the greatest literary horror moments of the 20th century. And finally, our number one spot. Tales from the Crypt. There is perhaps one literary graphic showstopper that modern horror owes all of its creation to, even shows the likes of The Twilight Zone, Black Mirror, even True Detective, which wouldn't be the fictional works that they are without the horror granddaddy of them all, Tales from the Crypt. Although there are several precursors, one comic book series ruled the roost of horror way back when in the first half of the 1950s. EC Comics, the otherwise unknown publishers of The Vault of Horror, The Haunt of Fear, and of course, Tales from the Crypt, the bi-monthly anthology series that delivered some of the most excruciatingly horrifying tales of all time. Although their reign was short, running only between 1950 and 1954 before, you know, the censorship board had a thing or two to say about the nature of their content, the Crypt Keeper alongside the Vault Keeper and the Old Witch swiftly became some of the most iconic figures in horror history. Horror hosts the world over wouldn't be the horror hosts that they are without these mysterious, terrifying, hooded figures first carving their way through modern entertainment and pop popular culture. Tales from the Crypt had one intention, and it delivered that in pits and spades. Scare the living daylight out of us. And it did. Well there we have it horror fans, our list for the top 5 scariest horror comic book series. What about you? What would make your list? Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, as well as any particular horror based questions that you're itching to ask us. Unfortunately that's all we've got time for in today's video, but before we depart, let's take a look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, David Dishington says, Hey Jack, do you play tabletop role playing games like Call of Cthulhu? And Hey David, great question pal, um, I've tried to play Call of Cthulhu on a few occasions, but usually it's whilst enjoying a few particularly ethanol laced beverages, and it's never really gone off the ground. I do however play D&D 5th edition at any chance I can get, and I play a dwarf bard named Grum the Guzzler. <laughs> I don't know why I put that in. Next up, Phantom Hawk says, Jack the Lad, love your vids. Can I possibly get a shout out so I can rub it in my brother's face? What's up, Phantom Hawk? Cheers, buddy. Much appreciated. And I always want to support a friendly brotherly rivalry. I say friendly. So, yeah. There's your freebie. Well, there we have it, folks. That's all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.